Adam, we are one third of the way through the conference season, six games in, 12 to go. We have a two way tie for first with Loyola and Northern Iowa both sitting at five and one. Your thoughts are on our co leaders? Yeah, I mean, Northern Iowa and Loyola, we've kind of talked about them all year. Good non conference season for you and I. Loyola's come out gangbusters here in conference play, like you said, sitting at five and one. I really think, though, both of these teams and how well they've played, it's indicative, right? We got a two man race. I think for conference player of the year, but by the end of this year, people are going to be sick of hearing about both AJ Green and Cameron Crutwig. These two have been unreal. Mike, we're a third of the way through conference season overall, and and how about AJ Green? Already his third time being player of the week in the conference. Twenty seven points per game this week, fifty one percent from the floor, and Crutwig is still a do it all type player. So. Both of these teams and their superstars sitting at top at the top of the league and playing well. Yeah, AJ's made 43 straight free throws, a school record. He ranks seventh all time in league history for consecutive made free throws. Cameron Crutwig, as we've talked about before, is across the leaderboard in all the stats. He's in yeah. top ten in rebounding, assists, scoring, steals, uh, block shots. So he's a uh, he's right where he should be in terms of player of the player of the year conversation. Well, yeah, let's talk a little I, bit about. A team that uh, Northern Iowa has swept this year, Bradley. They're right there. They're a game out of first place, and they've played the leaders twice, so shorthanded both times. So talk a little bit about Bradley for us. Yeah, and, and, I mean, Elijah Childs, that injury is really unfortunate. But this Bradley team is so tough to beat. I mean, you look at what they've done over the years. When they have injuries, guys just continue to step up. And the way Brian Wardle has that team defending. L- listen, in that Northern Iowa game, yeah, they ended up losing by more than 10, but the coming out party of Daniel Kingsby. How about him stepping into a more prominent role? 28 points, five assists. If he can fill in as that type of a consistent playmaker, you combine that with Brown and his ability to to facilitate and finish and the potential of Nate Cannell on what he can do, especially from distance. This team can be pretty dangerous because of how well they defend. I really like the way Bradley's playing. And Bradley, yeah, of course, plays very well at home. They had a 14-game winning streak snapped by Northern Iowa the other day, and you will expect Bradley to keep winning at home, as most of our league schools have done. Uh, one of those schools, Southern Illinois. They've been very potent at home. They beat Drake the other night by double digits at home and shortened bench for the Salukis. What, yeah. what are your thoughts on SIU and Brian Mullins' club? Yeah, I, I mean, you look at their record and you see three and three and maybe a little upside surprise there. And, and one thing you just mentioned, so in the league, 21 and nine at home, well, what are the Salukis do? And they're taking care of business. So if you if you look at their losses, too, you want to really unravel their record. So three and three in the league, they lost on the road to Indiana State, who's also three and three, Loyola, who's five and one, and Bradley, who's four and two. So they've lost to teams who are kind of in the upper echelon of the standings on the road. I think they're pretty well situated to be the surprise team in the league this year, maybe not being at the bottom of the standings, but being able to kind of creep up and avoid that Thursday game. And Missouri State, our preseason favorite, also 3-3 three and three, with a bunch of teams sitting at 3-3. Three and three. The Bears have two road wins. They've won at Illinois State and they've won at Evansville. They return at home uh, for the Thursday game against Valparaiso on CBS Sports Network. Uh, your, your thoughts on where the Bears are right now? Yeah, you know, I think for the Bears, obviously, I, I think a lot of people associated with that program are not excited to see 3-3, three and three, but... Don't count the Bears out just yet. So look at their losses similarly. They lost to Northern Iowa. They lost to Bradley and Loyola. And even though they lost a couple home games, like you said, Mike, they've been able to, and they have the talent to, go steal road those road wins. And, and so, yes, they have not put it together quite yet. They haven't went on a stretch where they're at full strength and have a number of guys just really working together. But Coach Dana Ford, he always finds a way. He did it last year. This was a team that came on strong late. Look for Dana Ford to make a couple of adjustments. This Missouri State team is someone everybody in the league is going to be scared of come March Madness. Well, I'm excited uh, about the next uh, two-thirds of our conference race. We've got a lot of ball games left uh, right now, as we talked about, in Northern Iowa and, and uh, Loyal at the top. But uh, we'll see what happens as we get down the stretch. Yeah, I, I think you always expect what happens in the first third to play out for the last two-thirds. That seems to be never the case. Plenty of surprises in store.